What's up everybody? My name is Shannon and I am still waiting for my Seder and today we are talking about Force Collector by Kevin Shinnick. So I want to start off by saying that I had very high expectations for this book, but my friend Alex got to read it a week before I did, and she helped temper those expectations. So, Force Collector is about a young boy named Carr. He recently discovered that he has Force abilities, but nobody knows anything about the Jedi. Everybody thinks that maybe he just has headaches, maybe he's got a brain tumor, who knows what's going on with him, except for his grandmother, who tried to teach him about the Force. But considering the fact that she wasn't Force sensitive, her training could only go so far. So he and his friend Maisie decide to run away from home and they go on this wild adventure going to so many different planets trying to uncover the hidden history of the Jedi. And what's interesting about Carr is that his force ability manifests itself through his hands. So when he touches something, he can see echoes of that object's past. So with each planet we go to, we get to encounter another object and get another piece of the puzzle. And I do like that idea and I do think it was executed okay in this book, but I was expecting more. I was expecting a more complex plot. I was expecting to get some more things kind of going into nine or a story that really stands on its own. And that's not what this book is. This book is just a tour of the galaxy and kind of a look back at the Skywalker saga. We discover that in the sequel trilogy time, you know, history is told by the winners. So when you look at history books, there's not a whole lot about the Jedi because the Empire erased them and they certainly erased everything about Order 6. So that's what Carr is starting to uncover. He's dealing with his own force abilities and how maybe he fits into the wider story. I do think that this was a missed opportunity. I do think that there was a lot of potential here to go deeper as it is. It is very surface level. But the thing about it is, is that I was expecting all of these things because it is labeled as a YA book and it just isn't, it definitely reads more like early Percy Jackson or early Harry Potter or, you know, there was a time when like everybody was trying to like be a knockoff Harry Potter or a knockoff Percy Jackson. Like that's kind of what it reminds me of, just the tone of voice, the way that it's told, like the complexity in it. And so because of that, it is a middle grade novel. And if I had gone into it knowing that, I think my expectations would have been a little bit lower, but because they were higher, I felt very disappointed by this book. And there's really just not much here. There's really not much to ponder over and I think it, it's very heavy-handed and it's very blatant. The references are very obvious. There's not a whole lot of nuance here and that does not mean that it's a bad book. It is in no means a bad book. It's just not as deep as I think it could have been. And I think that when it comes to connecting it to the wider story, there were a lot of missed opportunities. The way that this book ends could have tied into some other characters really well, but it doesn't. And it's just a little bit frustrating. And our characters seem a little bit too young for the age that they're supposed to be. And there's not a whole lot of nuance or development with any of our characters. The only one that we really see anything from is Carr. And it's not super believable. It does feel very rushed. However, I would say with young readers, I think this is a really great book to start with because I read this book in two days. Like it's so easy to read. Like it's 400 pages, but it is just so easy to read. It goes so quickly. And if you have seen all the movies, then you kind of know where things are. It's very easy to visualize. But when it comes into like learning more or going deeper into the lore of Star Wars, you're not really going to get that here. It might open the door to more books if you haven't read too many before, but there's really not much here. I don't mean to be so hard on this book because it's really not that bad. It's just really disappointing and I just really feel like it could have been so much better. And story-wise, there's just really nothing here and the way that it ends is a little bit cringy and that might just be me it might be really cool for other people but i just wish we could have gotten more especially since this is a road to like the rise of skywalker novel i wish it could have been tied more deeply into the overall story instead of just these you know like very heavy-handed references this book is very obtuse there's, there's really like nothing hidden here it's there's no nuance at all there's no complexity but it is okay for what it is so I am giving this book a C minus. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I definitely think if you are interested in it, then you should give it a shot, but it's not necessary going into The Rise of Skywalker. It's not really necessary for the wider canon. If anything, it just makes me more confused because we get some interesting details from Jedi Fallen Order, which also came out along the same time as this book did, that kind of clash with this book 
almost, I don't know, if you're wanting more of that kind of stuff, go play that game or go watch the gameplay. It's very good. So overall, it's just a weird read. It's fast, it's okay, but I wouldn't say that you need to check it out. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button down below and don't forget to subscribe so you can talk books with me every week. That is everything I got for today and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.